Okay, today I wanted to provide just a quick video um, discussing how to, for one, measure angles and distance um, in AutoCAD, Civil 3D, but also how to draw lines um, based on bearings. Um, so this example basically is following, um, trying to calculate a right-of-way easement. Um, and this is the example I'm using here. So this, it's already written up, um, but I want to show you how I was able to attain that um, and go through the process there. So the first thing, basically what I'm going to be looking at um, here, this, this magenta line, this is the cut and fill line of this project. Um, you have the center line of the roadway. Um, this green line is the section line or the parcel boundary. Um, and then this blue line basically is the um, buffered out area around this cut and fill basically to give the contractor room to move. Um, and that's going to be basically our right of way easement. Um, so over here is the section corner. So I've got it as the southeast corner in the section township range. Um, so we're going to start there. So we have commencing from the southeast corner. And basically, I'll show you how to get um, all these bearings. So just as a refresher um, on, on bearings, basically, you split them up into quadrants. Um, so you have northeast, southeast, um, southwest, and northwest. And it goes in that order, um, which we'll discuss in a minute um, as far as AutoCAD is concerned. So basically, each bearing is broken up within that um, quadrant. And so you either start going south or north, and then it's how many degrees west or east within that, within either south or north. Um, so we'll start here, and the easiest way I've found to measure um, these angles. So here you can see that these lines aren't, aren't basically, aren't perpendicular, aren't square. Um, they have a little bit of tilt to them. Um, so they're not orthographic. Um, but that's kind of what we want to compare them to. So I'm gonna just draw a line in here and then snap to this in section corner. Um, and then here, if you push F8, um, you can turn the orthographic projection on. And so I like to just draw a line here and you know that that is perfectly due north. Um, and so we're measuring it off of there. And so how many degrees, which way um, is that? So we have this as our basis point so that we know this is zero degrees north. And so now what I wanna do is measure for one, the distance from this section corner um, to my point of beginning here, right here in this corner. So you do one bearing at a time. So here I'm gonna type MEA for measure geom. And then here it gives us a lot of options. So I'm gonna select distance and I'll snap first here. And I'm gonna take ortho off just so it's more clear where it's going. And then snap to here. So I have 13. 18 feet. So I've got that right up here, but now we need a bearing for that. So I come back down to measure the angle. And so I'm going to come back here. And so I will click on this line. So it selects arc circle line. So you click the first line there and then it says six, click the second line. So I click here. Now here's something to note. So this is giving me an angle greater than 90 degrees. So I wanted to check, so I came from this line, which I know is true north, and it curves it down here. So that's greater than 90 degrees, so it's not in this northwest quadrant. And so this is one of the tricks you have to kind of move your plumb line, essentially, to which direction you want it to go. So I'm gonna exit out of there and actually move this line snap it to the corner I'm gonna move it down here so I know it's in the southwest quadrant here so go back to MEA measure the A for angle now I can click here 
and then the second line here and now it's telling me the true angle so again this will be a south 89 degrees 8 minutes 54 seconds west because basically we start south and we go west and so that's what I have here so again this entire process it's just a matter of moving your baseline here kind of to where you think it needs to be um, so for this next one here I've got this green line I need to go so I'm gonna move it here and now it's basically just going to be this little angle right here so we can again measure that one a for angle and we start with this one and then we move to our second line there and so it's just this very small angle zero degrees 55 minutes 11 seconds which is what I had here um, so that gives you a general idea and then you would just work through the process so basically and then I measure this line to the point of beginning and I'll follow the same process to work around. We're actually using this little section here. You work around from the point of beginning, and I like to go up, over, down, and then come back. And so that's what this represents here. So I won't go through all of that, but just kind of brief, that's how I got these measurements. But what I like to do, once I have them, you're always making mistakes, typing it out, um, doing different things, but you wanna make sure you know you've got everything accurate so obviously one way you can just go back and quickly measure the angles and the distances um, but I like to draw them again so I'm gonna scoot over here into some blank space and then this is kinda what I want to show is how to draw this out um, and for this I like just using lines because it's just single individual lines instead of a polyline um, and then that way you can kinda manipulate each one individually so we're going to follow this through and work all the way through it real quick. Um, so we're going to go back through. We'll start in the southeast corner. So we'll just create kind of a, I like to just draw, oops, sorry, a circle. So C for circle. And then just kind of draw that. And then that center point will be my section corner. And so I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so click line and then specify the first point. I've got the center snap on. So snap to the center there. So now it's asking for basically a distance but what we want to do is put it in a bearing of distance so what I'm gonna do here is you hit apostrophe B D okay and then hit enter and now it, you basically switched over into bearing a distance um, for inputting your line specifications so now it's asking you to specify a quadrant so if you look at the bottom here it actually tells you the, the code, so the numbers for each quadrant. And essentially it follows the path the way a clock would. So from, from 12 to 3, so your would be your northeast quadrant, and that's number 1, quadrant number 1. And then, so a 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock on a clock would be quadrant 2, southeast. 6 to 9 is your quadrant 3, the southwest and then nine to 12 is your quadrant four. So it, it follows that, that pattern. So here I have a bearing, so it says Southwest. So I know I need to be in the Southwest quadrant, which is quadrant three. So I type in three, hit enter, and now it's asking me to specify the bearing. And so I come back up here. So the bearing is 89 degrees, eight minutes and 54 seconds. So you type 89 and hit D, um, for degrees, 0, 8 minutes and 54 seconds. Hit enter, and then now it's asking for the distance. So we come back, and our distance was up here 13, 18 feet. So 13, 18, and hit enter. Okay, and see now we've got a line. And so we've got our first, first point. So the next one is then northwest at this bearing. 24.78 feet. So northwest is quadrant four. So again, we're just gonna continue going along the path. So quadrant four, a bearing of zero D, zero degrees, 55 minutes, 11 seconds, and 24.78 feet. Okay, and now we'll just work through this real quick. Um, so now northwest again, so quadrant four, 
it's the same bearing, 0D, 55 minutes, 11 seconds, 13.99 feet. Then the next one is southeast, so that's quadrant two. And 89D, 15 minutes, 59 seconds. And this is 100.08 feet. And again, I'm following this right here. Um, so this was what I'd already prescribed for this area. So the next one, again, southeast. 59 degrees, 44 minutes, one second. And this is 21.73 feet. Okay, and then basically this last one is going back to the point of beginning. Um, so it's southwest now, which would be quadrant three. And the bearing is 89 degrees, eight minutes, 59 seconds for 118.62 feet. Okay, so at that point, I should be back to the beginning. So I'm going to enter out of here and push enter twice and we'll be done. So I'm going to highlight this and change the colors real quick. This is, this was our track to get to the point of beginning. And then right in here should be the point of beginning. So I'm going to zoom in. So ideally, and in a perfectly ideal world, these should snap to perfectly, these blue lines. But if you zoom way, way in, you'll find that they actually don't. Um, so we want to make sure how far off that is. So I'm an MEA for measure. I'm just measuring distance here. So we'll measure the distance between essentially the point of beginning and here. Okay. So we have 0.01 feet. So basically that was our significant digit here. Um, we rounded off to, you know, hundreds of feet. Um, and so if we're within 0.01 feet, essentially we're within our, our tolerance for where our significant digits are. And so that's perfectly fine. So that's essentially the same as zero. Um, and so we're good there. That's essentially just a rounding issue. Um, but I did want to point that out. If you're getting, you know, maybe you could go up to 0.02, but once you get past that, you know, you've probably got an issue just slightly in your bearing that there's just a little bit off there. Um, and again, we didn't go to um, include any decimal points in our minutes either. And so, you know, there's a little bit of fluctuation there for precision. Um, but essentially that's how to go through um, to measure angles um, in um, degrees, minutes, seconds, and then how to um, repeat that, drawing it out um, using bearing and distance. So hopefully this was helpful.